we once again take oath, our oath of moral governance as a symbol of our renewed commitment to dutifully finish the transition period. Priorities, fight the ills of governance, and fulfill our amana, our trust to the Bangsamoro people. His Excellency, the past three years has not been easy, but through our collective effort and the guidance of Allah, we were able to accomplish significant milestones that we can all be proud of, Mr. President. Allow me to take this opportunity to briefly share to you some of the results of our hard work on the past three years of navigating the complex transition period. The previous Bangsamoro Transition Authority enacted a total of 31 laws, including the three priority codes, which are the Bangsamoro Administrative Code, the Bangsamoro Civil Service Code, and the Bangsamoro Education Code. We have also timely passed our annual appropriations law and shall continue to do so in the years to come. According to the Philippine Statistic Authority, the BARM recorded the most significant reduction in terms of poverty incidence among families from 55.9% in 2018 to 29.8% in 2021. Oh. The BARM recorded the highest and the only double-digit reduction in the country. In 2018, a total of 356,170 families were considered poor in the DEN ERMM. In 2021, it is reduced to 207,160 families, alhamdulillah. <laughs> Mr. President, the BARM's economy also increased by 7.5 percent, which, which makes us the second fastest growing region in the country. <laughs> Moreover, we registered the highest growth in terms of value of production in agriculture and fisheries at 7.2 percent in 2021. The BARM also ranked first among the country's fish producing region during the second quarter of 2022. Based on the PSA's fisheries situation report, the total volume of fisheries production in the country reached 1,213.31 metric tons, of which 346.42 metric tons, or 28.6%, is from the BARM. <laughs> Making us the largest contributor of fisheries production in the Philippines. Your Excellency, with a significantly better peace and order situation, Investors are becoming more and more confident in making the BARM a vibrant investment destination. Since 2019, we have recorded a total of at least 8.1 billion pesos worth of investment, which translates to a six point 077 employment opportunities. Oh. To put this into further context, Mr. President, the 8.1 billion investment we recorded in the past three years 
is more than what the previous ARMM recorded for around 30 years of its existence, alhamdulillah. <laughs> Mr. President, we also put premium to the importance of infrastructure in boosting our economy and connecting the areas of the farm. As of late, we have constructed, paved, improved, and rehabilitated at least 457.748 kilometers of local road, 34 bridges, 26 flood control projects, 14 port construction and rehabilitation projects, and 170 water system projects. We have likewise successfully turned over 465 housing units for the poorest of the poor. At least 3,200 housing units are currently being constructed to help elevate more families out of the poverty line. We also provided strategic infrastructure support to our local government units and government agencies. Once complete, completed, we will be able to provide at least 220 barangay halls, 26 public markets, 9 municipal police stations, 21 municipal hall buildings, and 14 desalination machines along with other government facilities such as sanitary landfill and public terminal. We just recently resumed face-to-face -face classes for all levels following the directive of Vice President and Deputy Secretary Sara Duterte. Mr. President, we welcome our students back with 482 new schools, buildings, 95,188 Bangsamoro armchairs, various textbooks, learning materials, school bags, and other school supplies. To date, we have awarded at least 27,300 scholarship programs <laughs> ranging from technical vocational college scholarships medicines and science and technology these are just some of our strategies to ensure that no bangsamoro child is left behind and in the process we produce at least one professional per family, insha'Allah. <laughs> Your Excellency, notwithstanding some of the significant accomplishments we have achieved so far, there are still many development and transition challenges that we need to overcome. During the extended transition period, Speaking of which, Mr. President, let me once again express our sincerest gratitude for heeding the call of the Bangsamoro people that the provisions of the Comprehensive Agreement on the Bangsamoro, the Bangsamoro Organic Law, and the BTA Extension Law be preserved, particularly in the composition and leadership of the Transition Authority. On this note, the peace implementing panels of the Moro Islamic Liberation Front and the government of the Philippines are scheduled to hold the decommissioning ceremony for the remaining 5,500 former MILF combatants and putting 2,400 firearms beyond use on September 28, 2022. The final uh, phase of the third, third phase of the decommissioning process. <laughs> Lord
Last month's historic oath-taking ceremony in Malacanang signals the positive start of the second chapter of the transition period, and we are committed to sustain the momentum and the trust you have given us as a testament to this, we are poised to file more than 20 cabinet bills upon the start of the formal session of the parliament. <laughs> These bills include the remaining priority codes. Foremost, we commit to deliver the Bangsamoro Electoral Code and the Bangsamoro Local Government Code, if not by the end of the year, then by the first quarter of 2023, insha'Allah. <laughs> For the remainder of the transition period, we also envision to enact the Bangsamoro Indigenous Peoples' Rights Act, the Gender and Development Code, the Internally Displaced Peoples' uh, IDP law, Magna Carta for Persons with Disabilities, Irrigation System Bill, and Energy Development Corporation of the Bangsamoro Charter, among other important legislations. <laughs> Rest assured, Mr. President, that we will complete all the remaining transition priorities and finish setting up a government not only ready for a peaceful and orderly election in 2025, but also a government capable of continuing the transformation of the Barm into a progressive and responsive region, inshallah. <laughs> Mr. President, following your trust for national unity and reconciliation, we have been conducting various consultations with stakeholders and important players in the Bangsamoro recently. The leadership of the Moro Islamic Liberation Front reached out to our brethren from the Moro National Liberation Front, Liberation Front as we vow to work together for a united Bangsamoro in hindsight as our respective journeys would show. We may have had differences in terms of strategies and means, but at the end of the day, we are bound by our common goal and ultimately our faith. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. <laughs> Mr. President, as we have said during our conversation at the oath taking in Malacanang, the peace process started the, during your father's time, and it would be a fitting end to this long journey if we could complete the process during your administration, Mr. President, you will, you will have our full support, and together we will make the successful implementation of the Bangsamoro peace process as one of your greatest legacies, inshallah. As I have said, now the leaders of the Moro National Liberation Front, Professor uh, <coughs> Noor Miswari is now with us. Also, the uh, Muslim Semba is also with us. But finally, I wish to personally hand over to you today printed copies of the draft Bangsamoro Electoral Code and the draft Bangsamoro Local Government Code as presents for the additional year of life the Almighty has blessed you with. Wa billahi tawfiq wil hidayah. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you, Chief Minister Ibrahim. At this point, may we request the 80 distinguished members of the Bangsamoro Transition Authority 2022-2025 to please rise for the oath of moral governance to be administered by Chief Minister Ahud Ibrahim.
Again, at this point, may you request the 80 members of the Bangsa Molo Transition Authority to please rise for the oath of moral governance to be administered by Chief Minister Ahud Ibrahim. As usual, we will now be taking the oath of moral governance. <clears throat> Please raise your right hand and follow after me. Oath of moral governance. I swear to Almighty Allah, the most supreme, the beneficent, the merciful, the all-knowing. I shall perform my duties and responsibilities entrusted to me as part of the Bangsamoro government with that most dedication, devotion, honesty, justice, integrity, completely devoid of all the evils of governance, especially graft and corruption. I shall protect the legitimate rights and interests of our people in the area, I strongly fight the proliferation and use of illegal drugs, and other evils of society and endeavor to promote and sustain peace and security at all times in the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region, Territory, and in the entire country. So help me Allah. Sukran, thank you very much. Thank you and congratulations to all the distinguished members of the Bangsamoro Transition Authority 2022-2025. At this juncture, may we call on the Special Assistant to the President, Secretary Antonio F. Lagdameo, Jr., to introduce our guest of honor. Ladies and gentlemen, our guest of honor and speaker has dedicated his life to serving the Filipino people. His long and faithful service has been one characterized by his genuine care for the welfare of his constituents and a firm determination to elevate the quality of life of every Filipino. During the May 2022 elections, he garnered the largest vote count of any presidential candidate in the nation's history to become the 17th President of the Republic of the Philippines. Today, he has chosen to share this momentous occasion with us for the Bangsamoro people and for the entire Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to introduce to you His Excellency, President Ferdinand Romualdez Marcos Jr. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Secretary Anton Lagdomeo, for your very kind introduction. Oh, please, please take your seats. Uh, with us today, uh, we have brought the leadership of uh, the country uh, to witness this very, very important occasion. With us today is Senate President Juan Miguel Zubiri. The Speaker of the House of Representatives, Mart Congressman Martin Romualdez. And of course, uh, another, uh, another department and another cabinet secretary who was very involved in many of the talks and discussions that you had had before we got 
uh, into the final constitution of the membership of the authority is uh, DILG Secretary Ben Hur Abalos. <laughs> of course, our Chief Minister, Chief Minister of the Bangsamoro Transition Authority, Chief Minister Ahud Ibrahim. <laughs> Bangsamoro Transition Authority Parliament Speaker. Speaker Balindong, <laughs> Wali Sheikh Khalifa Nando, <laughs> Wali. Supreme Court Associate Justice Japar Dimapao, <laughs> and let us not forget the uh, chairman of the MNLF, Chairman Nur Miswari. And all the distinguished guests that we have here with us today on this very solemn and important occasion. I am, of course, very pleased to be here with you this afternoon at the, to witness the opening of the session of the Bangsamoro Transition Authority Parliament. My congratulations to all that have been involved. <laughs> to the newly appointed members of the Bangsamoro Transition Authority, we would, we would not have witnessed this glorious unfolding of history without you. We set our feet before this place and herald the triumphs that you have won through courage, certainty, and noble bravery. The diverse representation now of the BTA speaks volumes of your answer towards that call for unity of shared responsibility and the invitation to advocate peace and development in the Bangsamoro region. At this point, we noted the gains as the Chief Minister had, had enumerated them in his own message. You have already accomplished a long list of achievements, starting with the approval of the Bangsamoro Transition Plan, the passage of the most important legislation, such as the Administrative Code, the Civil Service Code, the Education Code. These are cornerstones of BARM moral self-governance. But nonetheless, no matter how impressive the gains that the Bangsamoro have already seen, I always think, this is just the beginning. As we go on and we formalize the structure and institutionalize the functions of the Bangsamoro government, we will see that those efficiencies will come in. And what we had uh, celebrated today and at the very beginning of the existence of the BARM, that uh, what we had celebrated, will, we will now look upon as only only a glimpse of what will happen in the future. The, the establishment of your offices, their functions, I look forward to the fulfillment of your vision to realize a united, enlightened, self-governing, peaceful, just, morally upright, and progressive Bangsamoro. As your president, I assure you, the BTA and all the Bangsamoro people of this administration's full and unwavering commitment to the peace process and to BARM. <laughs> this is why we are steadfast in our commitment to the peace process here in Southern Philippines. So we, are, we push for socio-economic development interventions to promote peace and development in areas affected by decades of conflict. Through the PAMANA program, we provide socio-economic interventions that build a culture of peace in highly conflict-affected and vulnerable areas. The government has allocated more than 19 billion pesos for the period of 2017 to 2022 in this endeavor, and we will ensure the completion despite delays caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. Additionally, the government, through the Department of Budget and Management, has allocated 74.4 billion pesos for the Bangsamoro region fiscal year 2023. Given these new opportunities to deliver our commitments to the people of BARM, 
I urge you to pass all the crucial legislations on foreign po and fiscal policy, particularly taxation, and to facilitate the conduct of the elections in the bar, the BARM in 2025. I also encourage the BTA to pass measures that will secure the welfare of the Moro people, particularly in agri-fishery, healthcare, transportation, communication, digital infrastructure, and e-governance. As we celebrate National Peace Consciousness Month this September, we know that with unity and solidarity, the BTA will be successful in facilitating the institution of the Bangsamoro government, one that is centered in promoting good governance and lasting peace for its people. The path to lasting peace is always under construction. But we walk this path together, and we walk it not because it is an easy one. We walk this path together because even if it is difficult, we know that at the end of the journey is historical justice, progress, peace, stability, and the unity that our peoples and our nation have long aspired for and so rightly deserve. I cannot end without thanking our partners from the different lands who have come to uh, Bangsamoro to encourage this peace process and who have invested so much of their time, their energy, and their funding to Bangsamoro for the development of the many different aspects that have fallen behind in uh, the development uh, the brought by the national government. It has certainly paved the way to this day. Thank you for your assistances. We could not have done it without you. So once again, I say to you all, to all the, the members of the Bangsamoro Transition Authority, and to all our Bangsamoro brothers, congratulations. Mabuhay po kayong lahat. Thank you very much, Mr. President. At this point, may we request the President to kindly grant a photo opportunity in four batches. First batch. camera
Second batch, please. Third batch, please prepare. <laughs> 